Hello. Today we're going to talk about the comparative study in IV film, otherwise known as the CS. I've already laid out a lot of thoughts in previous lectures about analytical thinking. All those ideas apply here as well. When you analyze, you look at technique and how techniques are likely used to bring out an emotional reaction. But instead of one film in the textual analysis, instead you'll be looking at two films in the comparative study. And you'll be looking potentially at more than just film technique. You'll probably be looking at the elements of a film genre, the elements of a film theory, or the elements of a film movement. So, right off the bat, this sounds hard. How can you pick a theory or a movement or a genre if you haven't really studied any of them yet? And this may be a little bit like which came first, the chicken or the egg. But let me say that if I was going to create a comparative study, and I'm talking about me now, not you, but me, who already knows all these things, still, I would first pick a film that I knew and loved. It would be one that I thought was really awesome, as well as maybe it's artsy or historical or important in some way. You know, like a film, when you talk about it with other people, you'd call it a classic. And then I would research that film to see how it aligned to existing film theories, film movements, and film genres, and then I would find something that would match it. And let's be honest here, the thing that will match most often is film genre. So why would I pick a film first? Because I love it already, which means I already know the key scenes. And if I'm truly a dork about that movie, I already know a lot about the director and what she was thinking when she shot it. And I may have already seen a documentary on the making of the movie, or maybe I've already seen film theory videos on YouTube all about it. That's what we do, for example, whenever we watch a Marvel movie. So let's just take an example. I love the movie Die Hard, a signature action movie made in America in the 1980s, and it redefined the action genre, as well as it redefined what an action hero is. Many people say Die Hard is the perfect movie from a pacing perspective. And this is a movie that I know very, very well. So now I have to figure out either it's film movement or it's film genre or it's film theory. So like, how do I do that? The best place right now is to go to our website here. Under the CS link, you'll find lists for film theories, film genres, and film movements. So go to the three lists I gave you on the website, look them over, and then make some educated guesses. Here's what I saw for Die Hard. You'll see that I saw two film theories that looked pretty good. No film movements at all that I could see and then one very, very clear film genre. Let's talk film theory for a second. My theory list comes with a brief description to explain what each theory is about. So masculinity looked kind of interesting to me as it compared it to Die Hard. You know, it, it's studying the changing nature of what it means to be masculine as it is represented in films. And I would call Die Hard a a masculine film. But of the two, I like formalism better. So formalism is the purposeful use of film technique to create a reality that's different than our own. Uh, but a world where when people go to watch your film, they accept it as real for the duration of the film. The opposite of formalism is realism. So I think we could all agree anybody's seen Die Hard. <laughs> Die Hard is definitely not realistic, okay? And because of the time in which it was made, the 1980s, uh, it relied on practical effects, meaning no computer graphics to help build the imaginary world, the formalistic world, to use that film theory word. Uh, and it strikes me it could be really interesting to study how CGI has changed formalism in action movies. The downside to film theories is that they're often hard to describe in terms of fixed elements. 
So for instance, masculinity is difficult because it's really looking at how masculinity is re represented in film and what that representation has to say about our feelings and what it means to be masculine. So it really isn't clear in terms of you know, elements that you can write down and analyze within a film. Okay, so let's talk film genres for a second, which I think are much better than film theories uh, because they have clearer rules. If I choose the action movie genre, I would need to know these rules. That's basically it. And if you know the rules, you can compare and contrast films against the rules, okay? So the elements of the action movie genre, you may think you already know this, and that's good, uh, but you still need to do the research and come up with a list of criteria based on research. Here's what one of my sources has to say about what makes an action movie an action movie. Okay, so it's the same with film movements. Film movements, like film genres, have very clear rules. Or a bunch of people got together and came up with a list of identifiers that made it a film movement. The elements of that movement become the things that you'll compare and contrast between your two films. As I said, Die Hard, in my opinion, doesn't really adhere to a particular film movement. So we're going to move on and not really talk about a list of elements in a film movement. But you'll see on our website that we'll be studying three film movements throughout the year. We've got Soviet montage theory, uh, German expressionism, and Italian neorealism. And that's really all we have time for in a year but there are lots and lots of film movements. Okay, full stop here. You have to compare and contrast two films that are from two different cultural contexts. Ideally, the films should be different in two contextual ways. So what are cultural contexts? Well. Guess what? Once again, you can go to our website where I've left you a list of all the cultural contexts that IB says are valid. But let's talk Turkey here and focus in on two or three contexts that I think are really easy from a research perspective. The easiest one I think is historical, right? Because that's just old movie compared to new movie. There you go. So. Since Die Hard is considered the perfect modern action-adventure movie, it would make sense to call that new. But see, here's the thing. I was originally thinking Die Hard might be my old movie because it doesn't have CGI. And I thought I might compare it to a movie like John Wick, which has CGI in an action movie genre, and I would call that my new movie. But now I'm kind of rethinking it because I did a little research and I found out that I had to go all the way back to the 1950s to find the very first, what people would call an action-adventure movie. And one of the very first and best was Alfred Hitchcock's North by Northwest, which came out in the year 1959. So if you're talking history, you know, technology is a big piece of that too. You know, I'm looking at history in terms of like, okay, let's take the very first action-adventure movie made and we'll compare it to a very modern action-adventure movie. Uh, but you can't move forward in history without also moving forward in technology. So probably, if you're doing history, old to new, you're probably also looking at changes in technology. And I would say then Die Hard might not be the best choice, because when you're talking about technology, you know, Jurassic Park, made in 1993, was the first, I would say, big, big movie that used CGI in a very convincing way cinematically. And I think we would all agree CGI has changed the nature of filmmaking. Uh, and since, you know, any film before 1993 wouldn't have it, 
anything before 1993 would be great to call old, you know, in terms of technology. And then anything after 1993 would be great to call new in terms of technology. Okay? So, you know, maybe, maybe if I wanted to compare North by Northwest and a modern movie, maybe instead of Die Hard, I'd instead choose John Wick. You know, because it's also got the technology slide. You know, so in other words, you're being asked to pick two movies that come from two different cultural contexts. So if I pick North by Northwest and John Wick, the two cultural contexts would be historical and technological. This gets us into topic, which means you've selected a film genre or a film theory or a film movement. So in our case, we've been talking a lot about film genre. So we've picked a film genre, action adventure. And then we've also picked two films from two different cultural contexts. We picked John Wick and we picked North by Northwest. And now you've got to, the last thing you gotta pick is a topic. I don't think you should pick your topic until you've really looked at both of the films and gotten your angle right. So in other words, it's really hard for me just to kind of blurt out what the, your topic should be just by looking at the two films without really studying them. But in general, okay, the topic could be comparing and contrasting two films in action adventure. That That's clear. Uh, kind of a good topic you, you just a basic hey I'm going to compare two action movies from two different points in history that's your topic the topic could be the role of CGI in changing formalism in the action movie genre now that's a little fancy but basically all you're saying is well, I'm going to be really looking at how CGI in the newer movie has made the movies uh, maybe better in some ways and worse in some other ways. Or if you're looking at history, you could be looking at, for example, the changing role of the hero in action movies as you move through history. So that, that you, could, you could just do a basic compare two films in history, or if you really want, if you saw the movies and you wanted to get really specific, you could look at something specific like the role of the hero. All these choices would appear early in your comparative study and it would show up on something we call a slate for about 10 seconds and it would look something like this. But honestly, let's get back to cultural context for just a second more because I told you I was gonna tell you about two or three. So we already looked at history, we already looked at technology, but let's talk about one that's really, really easy geography. It's a really easy cultural context to look at because you, geography is, a, is another way of saying movies from different countries, okay? And a quick internet search on action films shows me that Hong Kong action movies are a huge thing and so are Bollywood action movies that come from India. They're both really, really popular in their countries and therefore it would be interesting to compare and contrast one of the first American action movies made, North by Northwest, against one of the greatest modern Indian action movies ever made, which honestly I'm not an expert on, but the internet tells me it's a movie called Singham. So in this instance, what are my two cultural contexts if I compare North by Northwest and Singham? The two contexts are history, old versus new, and geography. I'm looking at American films versus Indian films. But let's go in a different direction for a second. Okay, let's take another classic movie I love, Night of the Living Dead, the very first zombie movie, the OG of zombie movies. I like this a lot because zombie movies have changed a lot over the years. So what do I do? I go to my three lists and I look at the descriptions and I think it over and this is what I got. 
You'll see that in this case, I'm not really feeling a strong film theory once again. There is a theory called stars that says you need a star in your movie to make it work. That's a film theory. And Night of the Living Dead did not have any stars. And my memory is that modern zombie movies like World War Z do have stars like uh, Brad Pitt that help to make them bankable. That's okay, but again, it feels a little weak. Like I said, film theories, overall, I would just avoid writing about them if, if you really can. Now, I happen to know that Night of the Living Dead connects to the film movement called German Expressionism. So when it comes to film movements, I'm just warning you, if I am not teaching it to you, it's going to be very, very hard to make those connections. I understand that a film movement is a tough one to know about if you aren't trained in it. So if you have a film you're excited about, my advice is come to me and come to our group and we'll try to connect some of those dots together. But for film genre, again, this is one where you guys can probably look at a zombie movie and go, oh, that's the genre, zombie movie, right? Now, I was surprised that zombie movies weren't on our list. But I like that survival horror is on the list. Because what's a zombie movie but you have to survive the night, you know? So it's like survival horror. And by calling it survival horror, that opens up a lot of films beyond just zombie films. So now let's say I'm going to pick my second movie. You have to change two of your cultural contexts. Night of the Living Dead was created in America in 1968. Like I said, it's the OG of zombie movies. That makes it old. So now you gotta think new. Now, right off the bat, I love the movie Shaun of the Dead. That was created in England in the 2000s. So that's definitely new. And England is geographically a different country. So you've got your two cultural contexts already, geography and history. But let's be honest. England is still pretty similar culturally to America. And for this exercise, the more different your two films are, the easier it's going to be for you to compare and contrast them. So you may want to pick the Cuban version of Shaun of the Dead. I know that sounds crazy. It's a parody. It's a film called Juan of the Dead, and it was made in 2010. Now, this is very, very different culturally and it probably has very different things to say. So historically and geographically, I think I'm gonna roll the dice and try Juan of the Dead from Cuba in 2010 against Night of the Living Dead, the OG zombie movie from America. And they would appear on your comparative study on a slate that looks something like this. The next part of your comparative study is called the justification, and it's where you demonstrate your knowledge of your task component and your cultural contexts. So by task component, that means the film theory, the film genre, uh, or the uh, film movement that you've selected. Uh, and by talking about cultural context, this is where you look a little bit at each of the films film background and you share some details about where it was produced, when it was produced, and what political climate was it produced, so that uh, people watching your film kind of understand where you're coming from, from a cultural context. So if I was doing my paper and comparing Night of the Living Dead to Juan of the Dead, this is uh, what I would have to show. Basically, this is just to shine a light on the background research you've done that helps you to understand the theory, movement, or genre more, as well as the backgrounds of the films within their cultural contexts. The main thing you're trying to do is just show the viewer why your research focus is valid. For this next section, you have about six to eight minutes. You can do nothing but compare for three minutes 
and then you can do nothing but contrast for a few minutes if you like. Or if you're smart, okay, if you're smarter, you can go by topics within the elements of that film genre, for instance, or that uh, film movement or film theory, and you can compare and contrast the two films by their shared topics. That's the one I like better because it fits more neatly into the rubric and it really shows that you are embracing the uh, film genre or the film theory or the film movement. And at this point, we go back to our language of film because when you look at the films, now you're actually gonna be talking about the way in which the directors created those films and how they put certain things together, you should be using your film language. So if I was looking at North by Northwest and John Wick, using history and technology as my two contexts, I would use elements of the action genre to help me generate my topics, and then I would use the language of film techniques to describe how the filmmakers created those action movie elements, the, the lighting, the sound, was it diegetic or non-diegetic, the film itself, the, what was the shot sizes used, you know, what were the shot angles, all, all that stuff, the editing techniques, the color choices, on and on and on. There's so many elements to film, which by the way, you can find many film elements on our website if you need to get familiar with something or like you're looking at a shot size, but you're really not quite that familiar with how you describe shot sizes. You can go right to our website and get a quick five or six minute tutorial on those things. Right. Now here's a funny way to look at it. What if I had a film that didn't have a hero and it was still an action movie? Or it was an action movie but didn't have any chase sequences? Well that's actually better. You know, just because it doesn't have it, you, you shouldn't get nervous and go, oh my gosh, I can't do this topic because it's not in this film, but it's in the other film. That's actually, in my opinion, better. Because again, the more different your films are, the better your, uh, I guess, an analysis becomes because you can clearly say, here's the genre, here it is in this film, but in this film it's completely missing. So even if something's missing topically, that's actually pretty awesome. We know John Wick was a, a mob killer, right? Like he was an assassin. That's not very heroic. I think you're gonna find in North by Northwest that your hero is, is a lot less sinister on that angle, right? Um, that's huge to write about. But beyond just kind of you talking about that stuff, you also have an opportunity to look at how the directors lit the heroes. Were the heroes filmed not facing the camera versus facing the camera? Uh, did they use high angles or low angles oftentimes? Uh, did they use close-ups or did they use wide shots to place your heroes in uh, their setting or did they focus on the emotional journey of the hero? Um, what music went with them? How would you des would describe it? Was it orchestral or was it, you know, like gangster rap? Uh, what costuming was chosen? Did your hero wear a suit and a tie or did your hero wear, you know, jeans and a black shirt, etc., etc.? So you're going to be doing this comparing and contrasting. Just don't forget to use the language of film as you do it.